am here today to share you my journey and my dreams and my aspirations i was a young girl who tried many sports like cricket badminton tennis and many more i wasn't a really active person when i was young but my parents tried to introduce me to every other sport to get the experience of it my dreams kept changing but my aspirations were always the same yep that is me hasvi murki i am studying grade 9 i am 13 years we have this practice in india that whatever the elder sibling is doing the younger needs to follow who all agree with that i definitely do <laughs> so we as young ones have less choices and that was the same thing that happened to me my elder brother was skater and then my parents put me into skating i was 6 years then initially i liked it but as years went on i didn't hold my interest beyond a couple of years as a young girl i didn't know my interest and what it takes to pursue my interests we need parents and teachers to support and identify our strengths by trying out many different things if one doesn't work. I'm sure most of you are supporting your kids, right? Thanks to my parents. I went on to participate in national skating and missed a medal by 0.01 mark. Close, right? It was only then I understood what it means to lose so close by. But I realized that challenges do excite me. Have you ever missed a train by a few seconds or lost a university rank by a few marks? That was the same thing that happened to me. I had tasted failure in the first place. Or let me just say, it was learning. My dreams kept changing. Young girls like me have some crazy aspirations in mind. That brings me to my next goal. I wanted to become a freedom fighter. That's right, I wanted to become a freedom fighter. I always used to get influenced by the movies like Mangal Pandey, Many movies like that. You all might be wondering why, uh, why freedom, because we already have freedom. Then I gave it a thought, and then it was just patriotism in me. So movies like Chuck the India, MS Dhoni, The Untold Story, and Such in a Billion Dreams, Dangal, always excited me. Made me get more interest in sports. So that's how we children find our passion. We then shifted our house, and then I was on my next interest, which was cricket. Like every cricket lover, I love Virat Kohli's cover drive, Rohit Sharma's pull shot, and don't get me starting with uh, Rishabh Pant or MS Dhoni's keeping. So the next three months, I joined cricket classes. And like many parents, my parents helped me to try out many sports and helped me to identify my interests. After that, I saw PV Sindhu winning championships, and obviously, that drove me to Badminton. So now badminton was when my schedule was getting more strict and strenuous. I had to wake up morning at 4 o'clock, go to the badminton court by 4.45. 4.45 to 7 badminton training, 7.30 to 9 gym, and 9.30 I had to rush to school go and attend classes and come back by 2.45. And 2.45 to 6 badminton. And then I used to come home and take rest. So you all might be wondering how my choices just changed like that so fast. But I did have huge learnings from these. This routine and schedule brought me a lot of changes in me. I was getting much disciplined. As sports people, we're all used to those schedules, routines, practices, and many more. There are certain uh, interesting things happening in sports people's life. Like, there's all these months or years we practice, and everything goes on one day on the court. If you miss a day schedule, if you don't eat properly the last day, if you don't sleep properly the last day, there might be anything that can affect you the next day. That plays an important role before a player's match goes to their mind also plays an important role. I learned one important thing that here sports, dedication and commitment. Everything includes food, sleep, ability to listen to the coach because the coach knows when you're best. Your routine can never be missed. I played more of badminton tournaments. In I participated in various competitions. I also have this one badminton tournament which has been very memorable for me because I won that badminton tournament by 30-29, by one point. Thank you. <laughs> That was when I defeated one of the players who defeated me in my first ever match by 15-7, 15-7. And I defeated her by 30-29. Here, I was able to convert my failure into success and by getting to know the opponent's weakness and making that my strength. And getting to know my uh, weakness and making it my strength. So I understood that winning and losing is just part of the game. Uh, we must all understand that. Sports teach us many things like leadership, time management, how to convert failure into success, and how to take decisions on pleasure. So when everything was going well, COVID occurred. It disturbed all our schedules and lockdown stopped us from doing everything we wanted, especially when I was about to go to districts and states of badminton. 
So with this pandemic situation, I had to stay inside the four walls. I, I had to make studies my priority. I had enough time for studies, but I couldn't make time for sports. And this was very disappointing. I spoke to my coach, and he suggested me to start doing a little cycling for physical fitness. This became my new interest, as they say, to go with the flow. I also went cycling inside my community because I love that speed. But I had this really big question, what now? Like most of us, I watched movies, I loved movies. Who knew that this one movie could inspire me and give that one life goal? That movie was Mount Everest. So that triggered my interest for mountaineering. Because I could realize my passion with facing up so many challenges in sports with so many trials. I watched the movie over and over about four times again. This movie was all about mountaineering. I knew nothing about mountaineering, but it became my next interest. My parents suggested me a coach oh, who can help in mountaineering, who is a mountaineer. The next three months went by quick. Uh, I was already planning my first ever expedition, which was the Mount Everest base camp. Now, who knew that? A movie could impact in such a great way. I was really inspired by that movie. A girl who didn't know anything about mountaineering or trekking was about to go for her first expedition. A lot of things started to fall in place. Now this interest needed a good schedule, good practice and demanded more fitness. My existing sport was already helping me. But I had to pick up new learnings and new requirements for mountaineering. I had to prepare. As I said, earlier, what runs through a player's mind before he or she plays a match is very important. That was the same situation I was in before my first ever expedition, the Mount Everest base camp. I had to travel a lot from Hyderabad to Delhi, from Delhi to Nepal, from Nepal to Kathmandu, from Kathmandu to Lukla. Traveling and the journey gave me new learnings, like every journey is a nice memory or a memory walk or a lesson to learn. So I traveled and I reached the place, but then I got it out. Is my fitness enough? I was physically fit, but not mentally. I didn't know that I had to prepare mentally for the mountain, but I was all physically fit. But mentally preparing for the mountain was very needed. So I understood that this journey could also cause some strain because of no mental preparation. We need to be mentally prepared before any journey or sport, which I wasn't. So when I completed the Mount Everest camp, the first feeling I got after seeing Mount Everest through my eyes were beyond explanations. It was all worth it. While I traveled back from Mount Everest, we had to stay at a place because our flight got delayed. And that was when I had to ask myself, what now? So while preparing, I listed down some possibilities that I could maybe do the seven summits. And I was like, yeah, wow, that's great. I can actually do them. And I could be the youngest to do them as a young person. So my mind was all preparing me for my next expedition, which was Mount Kilimanjaro in South Africa. I was all pumped up to go because this was the summit that I saw only like four months ago. It was all exciting and I was all pumped up. I could summit Mount Kilimanjaro now. I could summit after Mount Everest Base Camp. That I was very excited to summit Kilimanjaro. I was preparing mentally and this time it was not that one-time fitness. I had to cycle a lot. I had to do running. I had to do walking. I had to do walking with weights. I also had to get up at 11 p.m. in the night. I had to do midnight walks from 11 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. which caused a lot of strain. So 11, 11 p.m. to 5.30 a.m. in the morning, I had to walk with bag, walk with weight. I had to get that sleep out of me because it was needed for the summit. And on, on top of all of these, I was able to score an 85% in my exams. <laughs> this put me into a lot of mentally challenging situations. It would help me preparing for my next climb in a much easier way. COVID kept postponing things. Like We have to make compromises. We have to wait because great in front of nature and situations, right? This trip to Mount Kilimanjaro gave me new experiences and I had to travel with a team of unknowns. Seven of us were from four different places, myself and three others from Hyderabad, one from Rajasthan, one from Bangalore and one from the US. We all came from different destinations, but we were all sharing the same journey, same path, ultimately the same summit. I understood that a team of unknowns with different goals can still mount a common summit. But all our experiences were individual. But there was the summit that connected all of us together. Uh, I'll tell you all of this. I must also tell you that I carried my biology and math textbooks to study across the journey. <laughs> So because both of my parents were educators and they always suggested me to keep priority in studies and sports. As my brother was already doing his undergraduation in the US, he was also an international skater. 
for him also both sports and education were as important as you know everyone else there was this story of mount kilimanjaro that i heard that one of the porters told us that mount kilimanjaro had a brother called mount mavenzi and mount mavenzi they both fought long ago they both fought and then mount mavenzi threw pottage on mount kilimanjaro and that is the reason mount kilimanjaro has no top and it always hides itself by clouds and then mount kilimanjaro in return kicked mount mavenzi on the face and that is why mount mavenzi has a very disoriented face it's a fictional story but it was a good story to hear while trekking up to kilimanjaro so my journey towards the highest free standing point hasn't been less than an adventure as i faced everything from the warm water in the morning to the freezing water uh, on the summit climbing kilimanjaro has been like climbing from the equator to the north pole we literally faced every weather condition the most hardest day i'd say was the summit push because the summit push started at 1:30 a.m. in the morning i was able to reach the summit at 1:30 p.m. almost a 12 hours walk where i was only with two protein bars and two chocolates for the whole day everything else beyond that would literally freeze but well the sad part was that only four out of seven people could make it to the summit due to the sudden climatic changes it started to get very foggy the temperatures were going sub zero and then everyone was mentally stressed up after gilman's point I was given two options you can carry on you can go ahead from Kilman's point or you can go back with the rest four but I told myself that this is just a drop in the ocean of problems i'm going to face there's like many more to come i'm i want to do the seven summits and this is just the start of it and i need to do more and i can't give up at the start itself so that is when i got myself mentally back so after we reached the summit i saw the summit for one whole minute after seeing the summit i was so happy for all those people who encouraged me and supported me for my journey through the highest free standing mountain so i was really happy to eat one of my favorite chocolates on the summit that didn't freeze luckily a uh, little did i know that coming down is going to be very very hard task it all started at gilman's point where the temperature was decreasing and the visibility was zero from gilman's point we were coming the terrain of gilman's point was made up of rocks and sand mixed so you know you can fall any time and there might be any uh, emergency that can happen that time but i felt tired the visibility kept decreasing by seconds we had to push totally down instead of the way we came we came up uh, from a zigzag route but this time we had to just go down descent straight and there are high chances of falling so that is when i had the worst experience and also the one time experience in life that i did five to six somersault i fell down because of no visibility but not to worry i just got a small wound on my forehead but injuries can't really stop us from reaching the destination right we all must continue to look forward so i finally reached the horombo hut at 8 pm almost 16 to 17 hours journey from kibo hut to summit from summit back to kibo hut and then back to horombo hut which was a 16 to 17 hour walk that was mentally very stressful uh, climbing kilimanjaro has made me think what is the purpose of a sport or passion is it like getting body in shape the fitness you gain or is it the stamina or is it what we learn through the journey a few things that i learned from mountaineering were these expeditions teach you a lot beyond learning and not just to succeed so we must also surrender ourselves in front of nature cuz in order to continue the journey you must just surrender yourself and enjoy its beauty and you can never conquer nature you can just be a part of nature and i also learned that self motivation here plays an important role because everyone will be will be in their own battle and we must not wait for someone to keep motivating us and be like come on you can do this come on you can do this you can just do it by yourself you should be self motivated never give up never ever ever give up because you never know how close you are in reaching your destination and try to change your important options into decisions because decisions matter for life and stay life long all these sports that i have done taught me different lessons for life and now when i connect the dots i feel it relatable to my present i aspire to climb all the seven summit i aspire to be the youngest to climb all the seven summits without any supplemental oxygen thank you all